Alright YouTube, what is going on? It's High Terror 5000 here today bringing you the ultimate non-combat money making guide. In this video I'll be showing you how to make money in RuneScape 3 through non-combat skills. So the skills that I will be including in this video are Divination, Farming, Fishing, Herblore, Hunter, Magic, Mining, Runecrafting, Summoning, and woodcutting. There are one or two skills that I've not included in this guide and there's also some methods I will not be including in with this guide just because they're very commonly known or I do not have the requirements for them yet or I don't feel it's worth it. All the times for each subsection are on screen so you can go ahead and skip forward to that time if you just want to see a certain skill or you can go ahead and click on screen right now. Anyway, let's move on with this guide and get into the first skill. So the first skill we're going to be doing is divination. How are we going to make money with divination? Well, we're going to be collecting energies by harvesting springs and then converting the memories at rifts into energies, what you usually do to train divination. However, this time instead of using the energies, we're actually going to sell the energies back to the Grand Exchange. The requirements for this are you can start us at level 1, however, having a higher level is recommended because you will have a larger choice. Also, having fit the Gods quest, that is very useful, however, no quests are needed for this money making method at all. So, there are two ways of getting energies in RuneScape. For this demonstration, I'm at the Sparkling Rift. All you do basically is go ahead and harvest some wisps and that gives you energies and it also gives you a memory or an enriched memory. That is one way of getting energies. The second way is by using those memories or enriched memories on the rift and then you have the option of converting to energies and that will convert your memory or enriched memory into energy. Simple as that. You probably usually do convert to experience but in this case we're going to be doing convert to energy. So the big question is how much money will this method make me? Well, it depends on a few things. It depends on what energy you're actually going to be obtaining. It depends on your divination level. And it also depends on how AFK you are. So give yourself an accurate measurement. You want to work out how many energies you're going to go ahead and get per hour. So what I did was I did 5, 10 minutes of testing. And I realized that in 10 minutes I can get 800 energies. Times that by 6 and I can get 4,800 energies per hour. That was at the sparkling riff. So what you want to do once you've actually chosen your energy is go ahead and maybe spend 5 minutes and roughly go ahead and see how many energies you can get, times that by 12 and then you'll be able to work out what rough money you'll be able to get per hour. So what energy should I try and obtain? Well as you can see here on the left this is based on a chart from the Grand Exchange. This is telling me how much each energy from Divination in RuneScape is right now. As you can see right now Elder Energy is the best at 149 GP, however that one does require the quest Fate of the Gods. So before you go ahead and actually start this method, you're best going into the Grand Exchange, checking your divination level against the energies and checking the prices and going ahead and selecting one. And this gives you the best chance really of going ahead and making the most money. I just chose Sparkling because it was a demonstration. If I was actually going to go ahead and use this as a money making method, which I have done before and I will do again in the future, I'm going to go ahead and look at the Grand Exchange and see which is the best for me. Now these prices are accurate as of the date that I'm recording this which is the 13th of June 2015 so please do not use these. Go ahead and go on to RuneScape itself and go ahead and check the prices on the Grand Exchange and you also need to remember that these will fluctuate a lot. They will go up and down every single day just because they are very commonly traded. So just because one of the energies is making you the most money one day doesn't mean it will be the next. For this demonstration, I collected sparkling energies. In an hour, I calculated I can get 4,800 energies, times that by the current price, which is 97 GP, and that's going to give me just over 450k per hour, plus divination experience, and that is very important. You're training divination, which is a very slow skill, but you're also making a decent amount of money this way as well, so it's very worth doing. Now, if you are very good at clicking and you're actually using a very profitable energy like Elder Energy, for example, then you can make up to a million GP per hour while training Divination. That's why it is very important to do your research first on this, but you can make a lot of money, and that's why I want to make you aware of this. This is never going to crash because everyone needs energy in this game. It's semi AFK, you're training Divination, and you're making money, so overall, it's a win win. Moving on now to the next skill on the list which is farming and the first farming method is very basic, it's doing herb bronze. I know that you've heard it all before but it is really really good money. So what we're going to be doing is going around all the herb patches in RuneScape, going to be planting herbs and then we're going to be coming back, picking them and then selling them on the Grand Exchange for money. 
The requirements for this, you need level 9 to start doing Herb Runs, however it's not recommended until you get to about level 32 farming because you can start doing runners which are good money and there's also no quest requirements for this. So before we go ahead and decide which herb we will be growing, I just need to tell you where all the patch locations are. These are them on screen. The first one is northwest of Port Phasmates and the best way of getting there is using the Ecto file. The next one is south of Falador. Best way of that is the Explorer's Ring. Alternatively though, you could use the Ports Room Lodestone. The next one is North Carther Bay, just use the Lodestone for that one. Next one is North Ardung. Either use the Lodestone or go ahead and use the Ardy Cloak 4. Perifindus or the Elf City, the best one to use is the Lodestone for that. That one does require Plague Zen being complete though. And finally, Troll Stronghold. Best teleport for that is the Troll I'm Teleport. However, you must have completed my arms big adventure to access that patch. So I'll notify you about all the boosts first before we go ahead and choose which herb we're going to do. So boosts are very, very important because they increase the amount of herbs you get, which in turn will increase the amount of money you make. So you really want to have as many of these boosts as possible. First one, Magic Secateurs. Obtained during a Fairy Tale Part 1 quest gives a 10% yield when farming from her patches. You want to wield this item when doing your run. The Scroll of Life is next, which can be bought at Demon Hind doing Dungeon Eating for 10,000 Dungeon Eating tokens. It gives you a chance of getting your seed back. Juju Farming Potion, very, very helpful. You can buy these off the Grand Exchange for a small fee. It gives a 1 in 3 chance of picking twice the amount of herbs for 6 minutes. And then finally, the Green Finger Aura. You might have different kinds of these. I've got a legendary one that gives me 15%. The first one only gives 3%. So it's in between a 3 and 15% chance of increased crop yields. Now you might not think one of these alone is very good but when you stack all these together you can get a lot of herbs. So it's now time to go ahead and choose which herb we're going to do. So I've put a table on screen you might want to go down to the link in the description look at the table because that's where it's most updated. This is just a screenshot of when I've been actually working on this video. So on the left it's got the level you require and that planting and harvesting XP. That doesn't really matter it's what's important on the right so it depends what boost you have but basically you can see the columns and this is how much money you'll make per herb patch. Now if it's just the profit column, that is basing it on six and a half herbs. That is something you need to know. Right now I'm using the last column because I do have the scroll of life, the juju farming potion, and also the legendary green fingers aura. So for me on that chart, it looks like toad flax would be the best thing to grow because I'd make 52 or around about 52K Per herb patch. If I go ahead and do four herb patches, and that'll get me just over 200k. Or if I do six herb patches, then that'll get me just over 300k. If we're doing this about every 70 to 75 minutes, which the herbs take about 70 minutes to grow, this can be very profitable because it does only take about five minutes of your time. Once you've decided what herb you're going to grow, just go ahead and make sure you have all your boosts with you, and go ahead and start doing a herb run. What I do is I start off with Port Fazamati, I then go to Falador then Carther Bay, then North RD, and then Elf City, and then if I was to do Troll Line, then I would do that one at the very end. Overall, very quick to do, five minutes, really, really worth doing. Maybe it isn't the most money in the short term, but in the long terms can make you a lot of money. So moving on to the second farming money making method, this one isn't as well known, it's not as profitable but overall it's still worth doing. So what you're going to be doing here is you're going to be doing fruit runs which is either papaya fruits or coconuts and then you're going to be selling them on the Grand Exchange. The requirements for this are level 57 farming, that will start you off with papayas, however you do want to do coconuts with palm trees, that is at level 68, so that's why I put level 68 recommended because coconuts are a higher value than papayas, so coconuts would make you more money. There is also no quest requirements for this. So for this money making method what you're going to do is you're either going to pre-plant papaya trees which require level 57 farming or palm trees which require level 68 farming and then you're going to let them grow initially once for 16 hours and that will give them a load of fruit. Once you've initially harvested it and then taken the first batch of fruit off then after that every 6 or so hours roughly all the fruit will regrow on the tree and you'll be able to go back to it and this is where we make our money. It takes 45 minutes for a fruit to grow back so in total that would be 4.5 hours. However, sometimes it can take a little longer, up to six. I would wait six hours just to make sure that all the fruit is grown back. So there are six fruit tree patches around RuneScape which you can go ahead and either plant a papaya or palm tree. These locations are the Gnome Stronghold, which the best way of getting there is the Spirit Tree, west of the Tree Gnome Village, 
Spirit Tree again. East of Carthaby, just east of Carthaby, Lodestone. North Brimhaven, your best chartering a ship from Carthaby to there. Prithen, Dissodelf City, just use the Lodestone. And then finally, let you either use the Lodestone or the Crystal Teleport Seed. So before I actually go ahead and do a run, I need to share this boost with you. So these boosts are different to the boosts that we used in the previous method. Those are not really applicable for this method. This is a different boost. This is a giant ent. And it has the potential of doubling your yield, which is basically doubling the amount of fruits you get. On average though, it only gives you about 50% extra. So off every single tree, you at least get six fruits. But with this end, you should get around about 9. Sometimes they get up to 12, sometimes we might only get 7. But on average, you should get 9. This requires level 7 to 8 summoning. It really does help and it will obviously give you a lot more money. However, it is not a requirement. So what is the best way to go about a run? Well, what I tend to do is I tend to start off at the Grand Exchange or use the Ring of Duel and go to Mobilizing Armies and use the Spirit Tree from there. Go to the Gnome Stronghold first of all, then after that I'll go to the tree west of the Tree Gnome Village, I'll follow that person out through the maze. From there I will then use the Lodestone to go to Carthaby and go to the one which you can now see on screen, East Carthaby. From here I'll then run to Carthaby Port, charter a ship to North Bermhaven, run down there and get the fruit off that tree as well. Finally what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use the Lodestone and go to Prithen this. I usually only do 5 trees, I rarely do the 6th tree. but if you want to add Letia and then either go ahead and use your crystal, teleport seed or the lodestone from there. As you've seen from that first tree there, I got 8 fruits which isn't too bad. The next one I get 9. So the giant ant you will get between 7 and 12 fruits. If you don't have the giant ant then you will just get 6, a fixed number. Right now papayas aren't worth the most in the game. They're at the lowest they've been in a while. Right now if I was to do all 6 trees I'd roughly get about 150k which isn't too bad. But if you were doing coconuts it's going to be considerably more. And that's why I put this money making method in this video because I do feel it is worth it. And it is helpful for farming as well. So now moving on to fishing. What we're going to be doing for fishing is either catching monkfish, sharks or rocktails and selling them on to the Grand Exchange to make money. Now I say three here because it really all depends on what the price of them are. Right now it's actually more profitable per hour to fish sharks. Sometimes it's rocktails and on the rare occasion it is monkfish. So the requirements for this are having 62, 68 or 90 fishing to do monkfish, sharks or rocktails. Obviously a higher fishing level is helpful because you'll catch fish more frequently and if you want to do monkfish you require the swan song quest so where are the locations for these fish monkfish is located at the fishing colony that's where you did the swan song quest sharks best place to do sharks is probably i would say at the fishing guild because there's a bank right next to it and you usually can get quite empty worlds and finally for rock tails you have to do this on living rock caverns recommended the world 84 just because there's a lot of other players there so what are the boosts for fishing well one really important boost i'd recommend investing in is the call of the sea aura now there's different tiers of this going from three percent to fifteen percent boost and it increases your chance of catching fish very very useful in the long run Next thing as well, granite crab or ibis or granite lobster. This increases the player's fishing level by one, three or four invisibly, which means basically you will catch fish at a faster rate because technically you do have a higher fishing level. And this requires level 16, 56 or 74 summoning, but definitely worth getting. And then finally for fishing rock tails using sign of the porter, it means basically you don't have to leave the fishing spot, you don't have to run around to the bank. It automatically teleports collected items to your bank, so it'll automatically go ahead and teleport the rock tails to your bank straight away. And you require certain divination levels for this. There's six different tiers, all requiring different divination levels. So fishing monkfish, very, very basic. There's multiple spots along the north shoreline here, as you can see. The bank is just in the distance behind, so it's very easy to go ahead and do. Now what is the profit overall for monkfish? Now monkfish are only about 575 GP each. They're not at the highest they've been. But if I was to do this for an hour at my level, I would get 300k, which isn't too bad considering it's very AFK. You only have to click maybe every few minutes. It's not a long run to the bank. And if you're willing to do the quest, you can start us at quite a low level and it's a decent amount of money while training a skill. So this is me fishing sharks at the fishing guild. I know there are multiple other locations, but I do think this is the best one, just because you're right beside a bank. Now right now in the game, sharks are worth 819 GP each. 
And as you can see in this clip, my inventory is filling up very fast with these two boosts. So this actually makes sharks the most profitable fishing in the game. Right now at my level, level 90 fishing, I'll make 425k an hour. That surpasses monkfish by quite a bit and it also doesn't require a quest. Again, it's close to a bank, so it is really ideal money making method. And finally moving on to rocktails. Now rocktails are a little bit different. What you want to do is you want to have sign of porters in your inventory. So as you see here, I am actually fishing rocktails, but instead of them going into my inventory basically with a sign of port it teleports things automatically to your bank like I just explained in the boosts part so this means that I don't have to go in banks so it makes it even more AFK so you literally have to click only when the fishing spot actually changes which is usually only every few minutes now it's very difficult to say really what the money per hour is in rocktails because rocktails are so commonly traded because they are the best food in the game right now in the game there are 2799 GP each and at my level, level 90, I'd make about 250 to 260k per hour, which is not a lot, and it's the worst out of three. However, at a higher level, you are expected to get more rock tails, and it is very AFK. It really all depends on your level, though, so you might want to do some calculations for rock tails before you go ahead and actually do it. So, moving on to Herblore. Herblore is a great way to lose money. It's a great skill, but you can also make a lot of money out of it. So, what we're going to be doing for this money-making method is cleaning grummy herbs and then selling them back to the Grand Exchange, Requirements are level 5 herblore, however, you just want to have a much higher herblore level before you start this because you'll have a wider choice, which means you can make more money out of this as well, and there's also no quests needed for this either. So I'm going to put a link down below to this because it's going to be active and up to date all the time down below. It's a Wikipedia page again, Wikipedia have got some wonderful pages. But this table shows the price of grummy herbs and the price of clean herbs along with their profit there. So as you can see right now, toad flax is the most profitable, and this is the example that I'm using in this one. If you you go ahead and buy a herb grimy then you clean it then you'll actually make 247 coins on that so imagine that 28 times 28 herbs is an inventory now you can probably clean about 90 to 95 herbs maybe not quite 100 but with presets you can get very very close to it and then in an hour that means you can clean about 5600 herbs so if I'm going ahead and cleaning 5,600 toad flax, for example, then I'm going to make about 1.4 mil per hour. Now it's very, very important to note that there's a limit of only being able to buy 10,000 grimy herbs in every four hours. But the great thing is about this is there's multiple herbs. So say, for example, I was to go ahead and clean 10,000 toad flax, which would take me just under two hours. After that, I can go down to the next most profitable herb, which looks like dwarf. We go ahead and do that for another two hours, and by then, I'll be able to go ahead and buy more toad flax again. It's also very important to note that, again, these prices fluctuate so much because potions are made so much because herb lore is a very useful skill. So I would always double check before you go ahead and buy a vast amount of herbs. And just to say as well that right now, I can make 1.4 mil per hour I've seen at times you can make up to 2 mil per hour and at other times you can probably make under a mil really depends on how big the gap is between clean and grimy herbs so for this, it doesn't really matter where you are located. Obviously, I have a bank near you, and it's helpful to beat one of the grand exchanges as well. All you want to do is go ahead and create yourself a preset, and then from there, all you're going to be basically doing is going ahead, hitting your preset buttons, either one or two, whatever it is, very quickly clicking on the herb, hitting the space bar, and that'll start cleaning them for you. So as you see, it takes about 15 seconds to do an inventory. The time you change over inventories, that'll probably take you about 18, 19 seconds. So that's why it's roughly about 90 to 90 five herbs all really depends how quickly you can bank now i do realize that to buy grimy herbs some of them can be very expensive some of them are like seven eight thousand alone which is quite a lot so you realize to even just buy a full inventory it might cost you 100 200k but if you don't have a lot of money to start off with and all you need to do is go ahead and just buy one or two inventories worth then just clean them then sell them then buy more grimmies sell cleans you know and that's how you'll slowly start to be able to buy more grimmies and make more and more money overall this is a very any good money making method I would say it really depends on how much the herbs are I guess though and you also get some herbal or XP which herbal or XP at the end of the day isn't the cheapest and when you're doing vast amounts of herbs like this you will gain a fair amount of XP so now moving on to hunter what we're going to be doing is catching swamp lizards and then selling them onto the grand exchange now the requirements for this are very low, so this is a great money making method for you lower level players. You only require level 29 hunter, and higher is recommended because you will be able to catch more swamp lizards per hour which would mean more money but it's still a decent amount of money at level 29. 
There's no quest requirements for this, but you will need some items, which are only some small fishing nets and some rope. You'll need about three or four of each in your inventory. So before I go ahead and actually show you how to catch swamp lizards, I just very quickly want to go ahead and talk about the boost. So getting a tracker aura, these are very, very useful. They give you a 3 to 15% chance of increasing your chance of trapping a creature while hunting, which will mean more swamp lizards per hour, which will mean more money. And I've also put in sign of the porter here. Now where the swamp lizard hunting area is located it is to the east of Canifis. And it takes you probably about a minute to bank, whereas if you have signed a porter, which yes, does cost you a little bit of money, you'll actually save that minute. So in turn, it about balances it even. So sign a porter automatically teleports collected swamp lizards to your bank, which saves you doing that run. So in that minute, you'll actually get more swamp lizards, but you'll have to pay for the sign a porter. I think it is better to use the sign a porter, however, it is really up to you. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off at the Canifist Lodestone. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to run directly south until you arrive at a hunting area. And this is the area where you're going to be hunting swamp lizards. So once you arrive and you've actually got a free world, what you want to do is go ahead and start setting up your traps. And I'd either recommend having three or four traps. You can use this spot here, or there's a spot just to the east which has three trap spots. Go ahead, all you need to do is put them down, and then take the ropes down when you catch a swamp lizard. Quite simple. What you want to do is make sure you have room also for your sign of porters as well. So as you can see, I've got 10 in there. And if I was going to continue doing this method for the whole hour, I'd start activating them. So what is the money per hour for this? Well, it really all depends on your hunter level, depends on what boost you're using, depends if you're using sign of porters as well. So really, it really depends on how many you catch per minute. Per minute, I seem to catch about five or six. Some people can catch even more than that. Some people will catch less. At my level, I'll get about 700k per hour doing this, and that is with sign of porters. I know some people who can get up to 800, 850k. I know a lot of people who only get about 500k. It's still great money though, and you get to train hunter as well. So I really, really highly recommend doing it. So now moving on to magic. The first magic money making method I'll be showing you is charging unpowered orbs into air orbs at the air obelisk and then selling them on the grand exchange. The requirements for this are you're going to need level 66 magic and there are no quests required. So for this what you want to do is set up your inventory with 27 unpowered orbs and also at least 81 cosmic runes and you want to follow the route I'm doing on screen starting off at Edgewell Bank. Now to make this very profitable what you want to do is also make yourself a preset with 27 unpowered orbs and at least 81 cosmic runes so banking is faster what we're going to be doing is running all the way through the cave as you can see right now up to the air obelisk and once we'll arrive we'll cast a spell and go ahead and charge these orbs into air orbs after you've completed an inventory what you want to go ahead and do is just teleport back to edgeville bank so once you arrive at the air obelisk what you want to do is to charge air orb spell on the air obelisk and that'll start to charge your unpowered orbs now this inventory will probably take you about a minute and a half minute three quarters to actually charge. This part's AFK, which is quite good. And then as I said, once you're done, go ahead and teleport to Edgeville and then repeat. So what is the money per hour? Well, the core money per hour is 600K per hour at three minutes a run. You should be able to do a run in three minutes, no problem. You can, however, actually increase your money per hour by using a beast of burden. So I would only recommend using a beast of burden from probably war tortoises up. So I'd recommend using a war tortoise requires level 67 summoning and will give you 18 free slots. And also a pack yak which requires 96 summoning and gives you 30 free slots. Now what you want to do is not fill them up all the way with unpowered orbs. You want to leave it about 3 or 4 slots. You can actually go ahead and just change between your powered orbs and unpowered orbs and your beast of burden. So when you switch them around it's a lot quicker. And that means the money per hour becomes 6. 650k plus really depends which beast of burden you use depends how many you go ahead and actually store in your beast of burden and depends how fast you can do it remember also you'll require more cosmic runes for that as well overall very good money making method not too high a requirement 66 magic it's a great way to train magic it's not very commonly done so it's always going to be money there so moving on to the next magic money making method and what we're going to be doing is superheating runite ore into rune bars and sell them onto the granite exchange the requirements to this are having level 43 magic and also having level 85 smithing which i know is kind of high there are no quest requirements for this. An item which I'd highly, highly, highly recommend, it's really only worth it if you do have this item actually, is having a coal bag. However, without a coal bag, to be honest, it can still make a decent amount of money. 
One thing before we actually go into this money making method is you're actually going to need quite a lot of money to actually do this money making method but you get a lot of money out of it. So for this money making method we're going to need to set this up quite specifically. So what you want to do is go ahead and have your coal bag in this position here and you want to fill it up. You then want to have yourself 11 runite ore and then you want to have at least 9 coal ore in your inventory as well along with your nature runes equipped on you as well. You're going to need to have a fire staff because that's what is required for the super heat spell. You want to go ahead and put your super heat spell on your action bar, whatever key you want, it doesn't matter. And all we will be doing is hitting your action bar button, which for me is X for the super heat spell, and you'll just be clicking on Runite Ore. Now there is a bit of a problem here, unfortunately. When you go back to bank, you're obviously just gonna to want to go ahead and hit your preset button, which for me is number one, but unfortunately it doesn't refill your coal bag. So what you've done, once you've hit the button number one, is you're actually gonna to have to go back into bank Go ahead and fill and then hit escape to close again and then continue on. So I'll just show you how to go ahead and do it now. Me hitting X and clicking. So it's time to bank now. Go into my bank, hit one for my preset, refill your coal bag. Make sure you right click instead of left click. So if you left click, it will deposit like I just did there. Right click and fill. You can hit escape. Back to your action bar button, which is X for me, and continue on. So how much money will you make per hour? Well, on average, you should make about 30,000 runite bars per hour. The input will be 30,000 runite ores, which costs you about 31.05 mil, added on to 24,000 coal, because you need eight coal to one runite ore to make a rune bar. 24,000 coal will cost you about 9.2 mil, plus 30,000 nature runes to actually cast a super heat, which will cost you about 850k. The output will be 30,000 rune bars, which is about 43.1 mil. So the profit is output takeaway input, which is about two mil per hour. Now remember, obviously that is gonna fluctuate, all just depends on prices. You might want to go ahead and just check basically how much profit you make per one bar, and then just times that by 30,000 to get your hourly rate before you get this method started. However, all this will be quite profitable. You'll also get about 150,000 XP in both magic and smithing for doing this. So moving on to mining now, what we're going to be doing for mining is mining runite ore by fast world topping and then selling it onto the Grand Exchange. The requirements for this are 85 mining to go ahead and mine runite ore and you need no quest for this at all. So before I go ahead and talk about the boost for mining runite ore, I might as well tell you the locations of runite ore. Runite ore isn't very common in runescapes. These are three locations where two runite rocks are located. The first one which I'll be using is Prifundus, the elf city. That requires Plague's End, however. Another one which is probably the most commonly used one is the Mining Guild Resources Dungeon. That requires level 35 dungeon eating which isn't too high a requirement. And finally we've got Keldegrim which requires Forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf. Moving on to boost. First boost I'd recommend is the Quarry Master Aura. It gives you between a 3 and 15% increased chance of mining rocks, meaning you'll mine them at a faster pace, which is what you really want with Runite Ore because Runite Ore does take quite a long time to mine. Next is a Lava Titan, which gives you a plus 10 invisible boost in mining. However, this does require 83 summoning. In the clip you're about to see, I don't use a Lava Titan because I don't have 83 summoning, but I still managed to mine the Runite Ore at quite a fast pace. And finally, we've got a Crystal Pickaxe, makes mining rocks around 15% faster than using a Dragon one, so I'd highly recommend getting a Crystal Pickaxe as it will speed up your money per hour. So as you can see, I'm all set up with my Quarry Master Aura and my Crystal Pickaxe. I've gone ahead and mined the two Runite Ore on the current world I am. So I go over to my friends list and basically if you right click on one of your friends and you can land up joining their worlds, so that's fast topping worlds. I joined this person's world, unfortunately the rocks are mined on that world as well. So I head again and did that. And what you want to do is add a bunch of people on your friends list. If you don't have a lot of friends, you can just go ahead and add random people. And then basically this is the easy way to go ahead and hop worlds. So as you can see, I'm mining the night or very fast as soon as I've mined the two of them then I'm going to go ahead and hot worlds again very simple I'm fortunate because a lot of people have added me from YouTube but I can I've got quite a big friends list so I can just go ahead and basically right click and join people this is the most efficient way to hot worlds, it's the most efficient way to get Renor because there's no point in waiting on Renor respawning because half the time it can take up to five minutes so how much money will you make per hour? Well, it's quite difficult to say because it all depends on your mining level, what boost you use, what pickaxe you use, what worlds you hop to, how busy RuneScape is as a whole. So it all really depends. It really can vary between about 800k and 1.25 mil. And that's on an estimation of you getting about 100 to 125 runite ore per hour. The next mining method I will be showing you is mining red sandstone 
turning them into potion flasks and then selling them on the Grand Exchange. The requirements for this are having level 81 mining and level 89 crafting. You also need to do the quest as a first resort. Note as well, you can only do this once every 24 hours. Will take you maybe about five minutes. However, it is very worth doing. So there are two locations for mining red sandstone. The default one which you can mine 50 red sandstone a day is north of Oogalog. There's a agility shortcut which takes you just out of Oogalog, requires 29 agility. And as you can see the mining spot just to the north of town, that is where it is located. If you jump back over the wall and go back into Oogalog, that's where the robust glass machine is. If however you've actually managed to complete the elite diary tasks, I unfortunately haven't, then you will actually be able to mine an additional 25 every single day which will increase your money. This is located to the east of Sofenum in the desert and there's a robust glass machine just nearby. So before you go ahead and head to one of the locations, you want to get yourself a glass blowing pipe in your inventory because you will need this for later. So go to the red sandstone location north of Uglog to start with and then if you have completed the elite desert diary task then you can go to the one east of Sophonum after this as well. What you want to do is go ahead and just mine the rock which I'm mining right now and you want to fill your inventory up with the red sandstone. Once you've done this, you want to go back into Oogalog, you can use the agility shortcut if you have level 29 agility or you'll have to run back round. And you're going to create robust glass with the robust glass machine. Once you arrive at the robust glass machine, just go ahead and click on it and you'll be able to go ahead and craft some robust glass. Once you've gone ahead and got your inventory full of robust glass, you're then going to use your blowing pipe on it and then that is going to make you some potion flasks which are currently worth about 4,700 coins each and you're going to go ahead and bank these. Go ahead and do another inventory so you can go up to about 50 and then once you've made all 50, you're going to go ahead and sell them on the Grand Exchange and that's where our profit comes from. So this task takes in between 5 and 10 minutes, depends on how fast you actually mine the red sandstone and if you have both locations unlocked or not. Potion flasks are currently in between 4,500 and 4,750 GP each. Right now I think they're 4,675 but this is going to vary so I've just taken the average for this calculation. If you're creating 50 then you'll get around 235k and if you're creating 75 you'll get around 445k. This is absolutely great money for doing a small amount of work and it's very much worth doing daily because you're only taking about 5 minutes out of your day. And then selling the runes on the Grand Exchange. The requirements for this method are having 91 rune crafting that creates you double nature runes and this is where the real profit comes from and also having level 57 summoning. You don't have to do it at 91 rune crafting, you can just do single nature runes and you also don't need to use the spirit gank, you can go through the abyss if you want to. For the method that I'll be showing you there are also no quest requirements at all. So there is really only one boost for this and these are pouches. So what you want to do is get yourself room crafting pouches so you can store extra pure essence. There are many different sizes. This is a chart from Wikipedia which I've took and it basically explains what level, what capacity and how long it is before the decay. I'll put the full link to the article down below because it explains it in a lot more detail and also how to repair when your pouches do start to decay. But you really want to get yourself as many pouches as possible just because you'll be able to carry more runes at once which means more money per run and of course more money per hour. So you're going to want to set up like this, you're going to want to have the wicked hood, this will get us into the nature altar, also actually if you activate it, it gives you 175 essence per day which is very helpful and will make us more money. You're going to want to have some kind of ring that is very close to the bank, I'm using the ring of kinship, you could also use the one that takes you to Tazar City or out to Castle Wars. You're going to want to set your inventory up like this and I will very quickly show you it now in the bank, it looks a lot nicer in the bank. So you're going to want to have all your pouches, as many pouches as you've got down the side as you can see I've got small, medium, large, giant and massive and then you rest your inventory filled up with pure essence. What you want to do when you come back to the bank is bank your nature runes, you want to right click fill, right click fill, right click fill, right click fill and then go ahead and fill up the rest of your inventory with pure essence. Once you've done that, go ahead and interact with your gat. Go ahead and hit number two and that'll teleport you out. And then once you are in Kramjar, you want to head in a sort of north eastern direction. Once you arrive, go ahead and enter the mysterious runes and then go ahead and craft runes. It'll craft all the runes in your pouches for you automatically and just teleport back to Demon High like so. 
So each run will take you about a minute or slightly more, really depends on how good your clicking is and also your teleportation method back. So say you make about 55 runs per hour and you've got 91 rune crafting which means you can make 2 nature runes from 1 essence and you've got all the pouches which aren't too difficult to get then you can make around about 140 runes per run. If you go ahead and take 140 and times that by the 55 runs you're going to get 7700 nature runes per hour. If you times them 7700 nature runes by the current price of nature runes 293 GP then you're going to make about 2.25 mil per hour. That is also going ahead and consuming the input which we had to buy 7700 pure essence as well. As I said at the start, rune crafting is one of the most profitable skills overall. It's a wonderful one to train. It is very slow but it is very worth doing. There's also another method for rune crafting which are mud runes. I'm not going to be showing it in this video just because I don't have all the requirements for that. But go ahead and look that up on YouTube or Wikipedia. It's even more profitable than this, however it has even higher requirements. So moving on to summoning, you might expect me here to cover fruit bats. So I'm not going to because fruit bats per hour have dropped quite a lot in price and also they're very well known but I'm going to talk to you about a more profitable but hardly known summoning money making method and it's using the spirit cobra special move Ophidian incubation to transform an egg into a cock a tice egg and then selling it on the grand exchange the requirements to this are having level 63 summoning and you don't require any quests at all so for doing this method you're actually going to go ahead and have to buy quite a lot of stuff. It is going to cost you quite a lot of money but it is going to be worth it. So for doing this method for one hour you will need to purchase or obtain around 2000 eggs, around 2000 OPH dot incubation. So moving on to rune crafting which is one of the most profitable skills in the game. What we're going to be doing is turning pure essence into nature runes at the nature altar using the spirit grat. If you have another way of doing that though then do not bother. So we're just going to go straight into how to do this method because it's easier for me to explain it in game than on a picture. So what you want to do is go ahead and summon your spirit cobra. You then want to go ahead and bring up the followers details to so get this screen here. You want to go ahead and place this very close to where your inventory is because you'll have to be clicking from it down onto the egg. As you can see here we've got an inventory set up, we've got some scrolls and the rest of the inventory filled up with eggs. This is how it's going to need to be every single time. Now the special thing is when you go ahead and click on the summoning head there, this uses the Spirit Cobra's scrolls which in this case will turn normal eggs into cockatrice eggs which is where uh, the money is going to come from. So all you want to do is go ahead and do this for your full inventory and then how we make our money here is selling these on the Grand Exchange. So it's quite repetitive but it is quite easy to do. That's why you want to have this down very close to all your eggs like so and it's as easy as that. So in an hour you'll be able to make around 2000 cockatrice egg and you should be able to use up all your input items that you bought to start with. Input cost is around about 2 mil, the output will give you around 3.7 mil. Again, all really depends on all the prices. Double check this before you go ahead and start. So the profit for this is obviously output takeaway input, which is around about 1.7 mil per hour. Now that's at a wee bit higher than it's been. I've seen it primarily around 1.5 mil. I included this because fruit bats are only about 900k and this is a wee bit better. It is very click intensive, but if you don't mind doing that stuff, then I'm sure this money making method can make you quite a bit of money. So the final skill we move into in this guide is woodcut. I'm going to be cutting elder logs and selling them on the Grand Exchange to get some profit. The requirements of this are having level 90 woodcutting. A higher is recommended though, just because you'll get more logs and then there's also no quest requirements for this at all either. So before we move on to the proper method, I'll just talk about the boost very quickly. Using the Lumberjack Loader, which gives you between a 3 and 15 increased chance of chopping wood. Using a Beaver Pouch, which gives you a plus 2 invisible boost in wood cutting. It requires level 33 summoning. And using a Crystal Hatchet, makes chopping wood around 15% faster. All these are very good. You don't have to have them all though. As long as you have some of them though, it will help you out greatly. So if you've never gone ahead and cut elder trees before, you basically get to cut them for 5 minutes and then they take 10 minutes to sort of respawn, regenerate and then you can go back to them. So that means you want to rotate around 3 trees, 5 minutes for chopping and 10 minutes for regenerating. The time that you've gone around 2 of the trees and the other one will be ready, it'll be regenerated again. So 3 of the best locations I would say which are very close to banks are south of Edgeville, as you can see there's a bank just to the north there and the lodestone is just off to the side as well, very handy south of Varrock, it doesn't have a bank very close to it at all 
but it does have the lodestone just to the west of it. And finally, we have south of Yanel. As you can see, the bank up there just to the top and the lodestone is just to the west of Yanel as well. I personally would recommend rotating around these three. However, it's really up to you what three, four or more you rotate around. So the tactic for this is get all your boosts on. You want to start at south of Varrock. From there, what you want to do is chop that tree down. Really depends on your boost, to be honest, and what level you are woodcutting. And a bit of luck as well, how many logs you really get, I can't say. I've got 99 woodcutting, I'm using all the boosts bar the crystal hatchet today, and I was getting about 10 logs per 5 minutes or per tree, which wasn't too bad. Sometimes I've got more, sometimes I've got even less than that. It's usually been about 10 to 12, so all really depends. You might want to test that out beforehand. So what you want to do is go ahead and chop the Vanok tree down. Once you've done that, you want to head to Yanel. If your inventory somehow is more than halfway full, you want to use Yanel Bank and then go ahead and chop down the Yanel tree. Once you've done that, you want to head up to Edgeville. Again, if you need to bank, use the bank there. Now remember, there's no bank near Vanok, so you probably want to jump into Edgeville anyway. That's why two of these are quite close to banks. So you probably want to go to Edgeville because you're not going to be banking at Vanok. So jump into Edgeville, do the Edgeville tree, and then do the Vanok tree. And then before you start the Yanel tree, you'll have two lots in your inventory. Go ahead and use Yanel Bank and just keep rotating like that. So use Yanel and Edgeville banks efficiently. Work it out for the future, and that's the best tactic to do. So on average, I'm going to get about 10 elder logs per elder tree. It really depends. You might get more, you might get less. I'm going to say 10 here. This is probably quite a low number. Usually I get about 12. Each tree takes 5 minutes to cut down. You can cut 11 trees an hour plus bank time. So you would actually be able to cut 12, but you need to teleport and need to bank as well. So that gives us the output, which is 110 elder logs per hour. 110 elder logs times the current price which is 4095 GP gives me about 450k plus per hour again that plus just being in there because I reckon you probably should average more than 10 logs every five minutes overall quite a good money-making method actually it's also not too bad for training wood cutting it's something a little bit different to do so that really is gonna wrap up this guide a very long and in detail guide basically showing you the best methods for certain non-combat skills in the game there's a lot of methods in this video that I've not gone over, reasons that I've explained for before. What I'd like to do is I'd like to do a follow-up video in the future going over those methods. However, I'd also like to add in other stuff, for example, again, non-combat related stuff, but non-skill related stuff, sort of like processing and collecting, because there's a lot of money you can make in those areas as well. I want to do all that in the future and also want to do combat in the future as well. I thought I'd start off with this guide though, because I don't see too many of them on YouTube it's mainly combat guides. I hope this video has helped you out. I've used a lot of these methods to make myself quite a lot of money and make RuneScape more enjoyable for myself. Really. That's what RuneScape is about. It's about having fun and hopefully these methods will help you gain money which in turn really makes you have fun on RuneScape. Now I have spent a lot of time on this video. I'm not at all sure how long it has taken me to do this video but to do all the graphics, do all the research, every little wee small thing, I wanted to make it perfect. It has taken me a long time. So if you could, I'd really, really appreciate it if you gave it a like and maybe a comment. Tell me any more money making methods which I could do in the future for example. Tell me if there's anything wrong with the video, go ahead and just comment below and I can annotate it into the video or put it into the description. Check out the description, there'll be so many links really to very useful money making methods and also sort of more in depth detail to the methods that I've basically gone ahead and talked about in this video. If you really really like this video then go ahead and give it a share, maybe share it with some of your friends as well. Hopefully this can help a lot of people out. I've taken a lot from YouTube in the sense of watching people's YouTube videos over the years for quests and for money making methods. And this is in a turn me giving back to the community. I've started to make quest guides and I've started to make money making all these sort of guides which I want to give back. So hope this goes some way to doing that. If you're new around here and I also have a Facebook and a Twitter page where I basically post RuneScape related stuff and sort of in it real life stuff basically just keep me up to date with my life and what's going on in runescape my youtube channel all that sort of stuff so go ahead and follow and like them pages if you are new around here as i said please hit the subscribe button what i do is i make guides like this uh, also do like skill guides uh, my main thing i do is quest guides also do a road to mat series as well so I do a variety of runescape stuff it is primarily runescape 3 but i have done some old school stuff in the past and i'm sure i'll do some old school stuff in the future so if you're not subscribed already then go ahead and please do that it'd be greatly appreciated again i hope you really have enjoyed this video hope this helps you out again leave it a like rating my name is hightower5000 i guess this is all for this video so i'm out adios